Hello, so today I'm going to be comparing the two films, The Night of the Living Dead, directed by George A. Romero in 1968, and Sweet Sweet Back to Bad Ass Song, directed by Melvin Van Peebles in 1971. Both films were independent, low-budget films and that were highly successful and also taboo for their decade. Uh, when examining them, I think it's appropriate to kind of incorporate the historical context to show their significance to the audience. Um, starting off with The Night of the Living Dead, there are many you know, social taboos throughout the film, but I think that it's important to note that this was at a time during the Vietnam War, so a lot of the, the fear and the desensitization to death is obvious in this film by the you know, exaggerated reaction to the zombies and you know, killing them off so that they never <laughs> live again. Um, you know, the use of the fire and like that exaggerated response uh, to the cannibalism, which is also very hard to watch and, you know, taboo for this decade. Uh, but society doesn't always get along and I think that also shows like the evident uh, realism in the movie. For me, what made it real is kind of like the ambient music and the suspenseful music shows like the emotions of the characters and they all react in kind of a frenzied manner which, you know, is realistic to human response to something like this. In addition to the use of the radio and the TV, it kind of just brings it into like a modern perspective and it's less of a horror film and more of maybe just someone's worst nightmare. Uh, in addition to like the law enforcement, I think that really like brings it into perspective and it seemed, you know, less like a horror film in the beginning and the end, but during it was a little taboo and scary. Uh, in comparison to Sweet Sweet Badass, Sweet Sweet Bags Badass song, uh, the music was very uplifting and the choir kind of served as a, you know, supportive background to sweep back throughout his, you know, journey running away from the police. When researching these films, I discovered that in the 60s there was the rise of zombie main movies or zombie feature movies and I thought it was interesting that uh, The Night of the Living Dead is kind of seen to be you know more gory and it kind of tops like the level of horror in comparison similarly in the Sweet Sweet, ba Sweet, Sweet Back's Badass song there's a continuation of the 60s in terms of social taboo and this recreation of what traditional social norms are specifically affecting African Americans and marginalized groups uh, there was also like the anti-protest <coughs> anti-protest going on uh, during the Vietnam War and the 70s were kind of seen as like you know the decline of traditional way of thinking so I think that, you know, these movies kind of reflect what was going on in the U.S. at the time. And almost immediately in the beginning of Sweet Sweet Pack's Badass Song, it's taboo from the start. You're kind of put into, you know, this underground club with all of these prostitutes and this poor orphan boy that gets unfortunately molested by one of the prostitutes. And immediately you just feel this sense of pity and this tragic, um, you know, this feeling of tragedy for this young boy, um, which I think you can kind of relate that to Ben's character too, where you just feel this intense tragedy at the end and it's really hard to watch and it kind of puts things into perspective that, you know, these are real people's lives. Um, 
but you know going back to like the obvious concept is black exploitation especially in sweet sweet facts badass song and it's you know obviously portrayed throughout the entire film uh, you know the idea is kind of connecting to this concept or obviously the relationship between white authorities and black Americans uh, and you know and kind of the relationship between authorities and you know illegal or underground activity there's this intense violence and you know very graphic sex throughout uh, the movie and um, it kind of contributes to like that crime like and you know dangerous African American and I wanted to kind of talk about maybe like some of the ways that the characters were portrayed Beetle for example I think is kind of seen as this sweet and gentle kind of dumb father-like figure who's the owner of the club and he gets taken advantage of by authorities uh, but I think he is in a way kind of a father figure that lets down Sweetback when he kind of needs him to to stand up for him um, but I think this can also be related to like the idea that I was talking about before of the historical context context and that uh, the as aspect of the traditional the traditional family especially um, that's not <coughs> clear in this and I think it kind of shows like the stereotype of African Americans lack of you know family structure and just like living in this like chaotic environment uh, in one of the scenes one of the women in the brothel kind of throws a fit and says look I'm clean just get out uh, you want me to throw a fit and eventually he leaves but it just kind of again contributes to like that disruption and display of exposing corruption of the authorities by you know, exposing the brutality and the racial, racial profiling. Um, but Sweetback kind of leads the movement in disobedience and he defends himself throughout. And the authority really stops at nothing to find him. I thought it was interesting when, going back to the beginning, when Beatle says, uh, since when do you care about black folks? And the authority or one of the police officers said, it's a revolution. And I think that just goes to show uh, the difference between government speeches and actual social practice or social interaction and how there's not always that connection. Um, you know, government kind of tries to push a certain agenda and it doesn't always trickle down to like the civilian level. Um, and he further, you know, the police officers fairly talk furly furtherly talk about the concept of democracy versus communism and how we live in a democracy, democracy but it kind of seems to me that it's more of a communist state in this film by like the excessive uh, use of force. Uh, when comparing Ben's character to this concept of black exploitation, I think it's important to see, kind of as you mentioned, Professor, uh, how ironic Ben's death is. And despite his kind nature, he's still seen as this monster at the end. Uh, you know, it kind of relates to this concept of always, you know, always being a cr criminal despite your, your character. Um, and also like the level of sympathy you kind of feel that for Ben the entire time and you 
you know, root for his character as the protagonist. You want him to, you know, make it out. But then there's this sudden jolt back to reality and there's like this aggressive, uh, aggressive nature of both Ben and, and Sweetback are exposed and as Ben is trying to stop the zombies you kind of see that in him a little bit more. Uh, but I think what's important especially to note in Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song is that um, it kind of makes people's lives a reality and it shows you <coughs> the importance of seeing something from another perspective or understanding someone else's perspective in terms of their experiences and uh, both of these men are kind of taboo heroes and uh, despite the odds they're really fighting for their lives and I think that's really important to emphasize, emphasize when you're comparing both of these films because they really are monumental and impactful to their decades and exposed real life problems. Um, but overall they were both very symbolic despite their differences and very interesting for me to watch. I didn't really think that either of them were too predictable and that's what I liked about both of them. It kind of felt like you were experiencing all these different things at once with both of them. And uh, I think they're both worthy of their accomplishments and I enjoyed watching them. Thank you.